Hello students, this is a lecture on Chapter 3 of Chiego, the development of the oral facial region. During the fourth week of embryonic development, a pit develops in the midline between the brain and the heart. This becomes the primitive oral cavity and is called the stomodium. Beneath this pit, the first pharyngeal arch or the mandibular arch forms. The maxillary tissues that form the cheeks grow from this first arch. The pharyngeal arches are also known as branchial arches. Four other pharyngeal arches will form, and each is important to the development of the face and the neck. Each contains blood vessels, muscles, nerves, and skeletal elements. The masticatory muscles arise from the mandibular pharyngeal arch and are innervated by the fifth cranial nerve. The muscles of facial expression arise from the second or hyoid pharyngeal arch and are innervated by the seventh cranial nerve. Constrictor muscles of the throat arise from the muscles of the third and fourth arches. Meckel's cartilage appears in the first arch. The superior hyoid appears in the second. The inferior hyoid appears in the third, and the laryngeal cartilages appear in the fourth. The cranial base cartilage arise to support the brain and form the auditory and or olfactory sense capsules. The buccopharyngeal membrane is located in the area of the future tonsils. It separates the primitive mouth from the foregut. The stomodium is lined with ectoderm and the digestive tract is lined with endoderm. The buccopharyngeal membrane will rupture at four weeks. Above and below the stomodium, enlargements appear that will become the face, the oral cavity, and the nasal cavity. The frontal process, as you see here in pink, becomes the upper part of the face, the nasal septum, and the anterior part of the palate. In the fourth week, the stomodium is well established and the buccopharyngeal membrane has ruptured. Above the stomodium is the frontal process and below it is the first branchial arch. The face and all parts of the oral and nasal cavities, except the tongue, develop from the frontal process and the first branchial arch. At each end of the first branchial arch, round buds develop. They grow up and medial, forming the maxillary processes. The remaining parts of the first branchial arch then form the mandibular process. The maxillary processes also give rise to the upper cheeks, the sides of the upper lip, and most of the posterior portion of the palate. The mandibular, mandibular processes form the lower part of the cheeks, the lower lip, the lower jaw, and part of the tongue. This illustration shows the frontal process giving rise to the forehead and the frontal bone, the median nasal process, and the first branchial arch giving rise to the maxillary process and the mandibular process. The globular process, which is here, also is derived from the frontal process. The face develops during the fourth to the seventh prenatal weeks. Environmental factors can cause a facial or pharyngeal arch defect, which would probably affect these tissues before the fourth week.
this is the time to be especially careful of irradiation and chemical, hormonal, dietary, or stress-related factors. This image demonstrates the facial muscles growing from the second pharyngeal or branchial arch to cover the face, the scalp, and the muscles posterior to the ear. The nerves develop in conjunction with the developing muscle fibers. By the end of the seventh week, the fibers of the fifth cranial nerve have entered the mandibular muscle mass and the seventh nerve has entered the facial muscle mass. The seventh nerve supplies the stylohyoid and stapedius muscle and the posterior belly of the digastric muscle. The ninth nerve, also known as the glossopharyngeal nerve, enters the third arch and supplies the stylopharyngeal and upper pharyngeal constrictor muscles. The tenth nerve, in other words, the vagus nerve, innervates muscles of the fourth arch, the inferior constrictors, and the laryngeal muscles. The posterior third of the tongue is innervated by the ninth cranial nerve. The anterior two thirds of the tongue is innervated by the seventh nerve. Motor, efferent, innervation to the intrinsic muscles of the tongue comes from the twelfth nerve, the hypoglossal. Meckel's cartilage is also derived from the first pharyngeal or branchial arch. It forms the template for the mandible. This image illustrates the cartilages of the face. Notice Meckel's cartilage. Certain bones form directly from connective tissue and do not initially form from cartilage. These bones are the frontal, parietal, temporal, interoccipital, and facial bones. This image illustrates the position of the nasal, premaxillary, maxillary, zygomatic, sphenoid, temporal bones, and the mandible. This image shows the facial skeleton at the 12th prenatal week. The bony mandible grows laterally and posteriorly to join the bony body of the cartilaginous condyle. Together, the body of the mandible and the condyle replace Meckel's cartilage. To form the palate, the maxillary bones grow medially into the palate to support the palatine shelf tissue and will continue to grow as the facial tissue develops. The height of the maxilla is due partially to the growth in length of the roots of the teeth. This image is at eight months. A suture is the line of junction or a non-movable joint between two bones, especially of the skull. Sutures are seen in the midline of the palate between the premaxillary and maxillary bones and between the maxillary and palatine bones in the posterior palate. This image shows the histology of a simple suture. Connective tissue and blood vessels are between the opposing bony fronts. Osteoblasts appear along the bony fronts and form bone to provide growth of this suture. Histologically, the connective tissue of the suture and the interdigitation of bone from either side can be visualized. Notice the difference between the infant skull on the left and the adult skull on the right. 
the infant skull demonstrates these thick areas called fontanelles. A fontanelle is a space between the bones of the skull in an infant or fetus where ossification is not complete and the suture is not fully formed. The main suture is the one between the frontal and the parietal bones. The fontanelles allow for growth of the skull while the individual is developing and growing. A synchondrosis is a rigid union between two bones formed either by hyaline cartilage or fibrocartilage. This concludes the lecture on Chapter 3, Head and Neck Histology and Embryology.